Then, a man who says he has absolutely no sexual desire at all is taking you inside the world of asexuals. And the ladies are digging into some soulful dishes and finding out the secrets of Southern Revival cooking. All that and the hot topics you want to hear, coming up on The Gear. Well, it may seem like sex is everywhere these days, but it's not on the mind of David J. He says he has absolutely no sexual desire whatsoever. He's here to tell us about living as an asexual and why there are a lot more people like him than you think. Please welcome the founder of asexuality.org, David J. David, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to be... I just want to let parents know at home, we're going to be talking about some mature material here. So if there are kids in the room, you may want to just have them go somewhere else for a little bit. Um, we're going to give them a second to do that. <laughs> From um, the mother, yeah. she may sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you actually define yourself as an asexual. Mm -hmm. You, you mm -hmm. have an organization. You're pretty much the spokesperson for asexuality. You have this organization with, what, 6,000 members? So over 6,000 Over right 6,000. So there are plenty of people um, experiencing this as well, living like you do. Mm -hmm. So can you just explain for everybody exactly what being an asexual actually means and how it is to live that yeah. way? An asexual person is someone who doesn't experience sexual attraction. Mm -hmm. So the way that you know, most sexual people, you're either walking down the street and you see someone or you're in a relationship with someone, at some point you feel like introducing sexuality into that. That just never happens to asexual people. And is it a problem? No, it's not a problem. So then why do you need to organize? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of things that aren't a problem that you need to organize around. We need to organize, well, partially because it's not getting talked about. Because um, a if lot of it's not having sex, what's there to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But I mean, I don't understand. I'm a little Because <laughs> we live in this world where sexuality is kind of at the center of everything. It's at the center of how we think about relationships. It's at the center of how we think about pleasure. It's the center of how we think about a lot of aspects of our mm -hmm. lives. And so asexual people are, you know, when I was in high school and middle school, I had no idea how to think about relationships I had no idea how kind of what was going on with me no one was talking about the fact that so you could if you not were a young man and you're an asexual and you don't have the same sexual feelings you feel lost like you're like odd man out because nobody's telling you why you're not having the feelings that everybody else is talking about no one's and no one's telling you that it's okay uh -huh. and no one's giving you kind of a space and, and words you can use to talk about it you said well, why is it okay. school is it that is that how young you are when you found out when yeah I was 13 14 when I realized that I mean pretty much when all my friends started being sexual I was kind of like all right I have no, I, no way to think about what's going on there. Right. <laughs> I had no context to understand it. And so I kind of figured out for myself, well, I'm not experiencing these things. I must be asexual. Right. Well, maybe so it's repressed it's, sexuality rather than, you know, that you're just like a normal guy walking around. Maybe it's repressed because you don't want to face what the sexuality might look like. Could that be? Lie down. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> just lie down. Thank you. Thank you. That'll be $100. Dr. Joy. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where you're going to analyze it or teach it. Yeah. I didn't know what it was. It's funny you would say that yeah. because I feel like, I mean, in some ways, my life would be so much easier if I were just interested in sex. There's a whole, I mean, there's some things I don't have to worry about. But there's all kinds of other stuff that I do have to worry about. I mean, I kind of exchange one big set of worries for another big set of worries. What about, what about when you're dating? Like, if you're d dating someone, mm -hmm. you've had romantic relationships in the past. Is this something you come out and tell them right away? Do you only date other people who are asexual? Mm -hmm. And if the no. person you're with is sexual, how do you, how do you match up? I mean, I date, people, I date people who are sexual. Right. I've pretty much mostly dated people who are sexual. You tell them right away. Yeah, and I tell them. I, they find out right away. I mean, it's... I, I'm pretty pretty out. So <laughs> but, what do they ask you then? Do they? Um, well, I'll make it clear. It's before we start dating, they'll know that I'm an asexual person, and I'll make it clear when you know when we're still in the friend stage. Do they see that as whatever. a challenge? Like, do they think, well, I'm going to get him to be sexual? A couple people have, but it hasn't worked out. So do you not have but, sex? I mean, do asexuals not have sex at all? No sexual contact? There's a couple of asexual people who kind of is a compromise because they're in relationships with sexual people. Well, oh. I mean, it's not like a code. It's not like we kick you out or something. But let me ask you but, something. Do you ever have sex with? You, do you ever have sex with yourself? <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's a valid question. Perfectly 
You may not be attracted to yeah. anyone else. That doesn't mean you're not attracted to yourself. I mean, there, yeah. there's a, okay, there's so many sexual people who will masturbate. But, I mean, I know that's like very, very Asexuals kind of difficult. Well, I'm so yeah. glad that you got seems kind of, for this, by the way. Yes. Kind of intuitive. But, yeah, thank you for, thank yeah. you for having sending that. But think about it. You can, okay, you can like having sex with a man and not like having sex with a woman. You can like having sex with yourself and not like having sex with a partner. Yeah. Okay. But wait, now you're describing you something the that's question. Yeah, right. You didn't answer right. the question. Do you like to have sex with yourself? Oh, me personally? Yeah. I've tried it. I and mean, it was all right. It's not all that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all that. The way you have a body experience. Right I know, because I'm honestly so dope. Because if you were having sex with yourself, excuse me, one more question. Yeah. That would Go mean ahead. that you had sexual feelings. See, I'm trying to get to that's the bottom it. of this. Well, the thing is, okay. The important thing is, at least in far, as far as thinking about my life, if you're going to have a sexual relationship with someone, yeah. that's a lot of energy you have to spend into thinking about that, like thinking about that relationship. So what, are you just lazy or what? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I still form relationships. Asexual people have the same emotional needs as everyone else. So I still have to think about forming relationships. I just don't have to think about forming relationships sexually. I have to think about you how am I going to so center a relationship around something else? How am I going to form intimacy in a way right. that Wait. isn't based around sexuality? Well, that, help, me, help me with yeah. this for because yeah. what you seem to be describing is more of a choice than an orientation. Initially, I thought you were describing an orientation. No, I am describing an orientation. But, but you say some people choose to have sex this way, some people choose not to have sex that way, some people compromise. So is it an orientation or is it a choice to be asexual? How you feel internally is an orientation. Okay. What you do, so an asexual person who does not feel desire can have to have sex can choose to have sex yes. if they're so in a situation, but that doesn't mean that they have a desire. Gotcha. So but how, do you, how does like... that work? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know this. I, I can see for a woman, you know, she can just lie I mean, there, but you, there are... you have to do something. Well, there are gay guys who have sex with women before they realize they're gay. It's there the same. Gay, gay men who have sex with women, do, yes, but they're fantasizing about a man. You're right. And then you said that, you know, married couples and, you know, that, that they can make the choice to have sex. or Just basically, you know, I mean, so how do they make their marriage work? You're just trying to take the concentration yeah. off of the sex. And you're like, where is the relationship? Where is our, intimacy. where's the rest of our yeah. intimacy? I mean, the point is love and sex are different things. Correct. And for a lot of people, they're very lined up. And when they think about their relationship, sex they is kind of really it. at the center mm -hmm. of where it is. But if you set up a relationship and from the get-go, I mean, everyone has really close friendships, right? Yes. Which are different, but you can form a really close relationship where sex isn't at the center of it. And so it's, it's I mean, it's abstract, but it's thinking about how do you form a relationship that's closer, that's more committed, that, you know, can be the basis of a family. But how about just, cuddling, right? how about just cuddling with a girl and kissing and just having a little of that stuff? What about oh, that? Oh, I that's personally funny. like that, yeah. Oh, you do like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. So what if the girl gets aroused? What are you going to do? I mean, she's going to know from the get-go. She might change well, her mind once you embrace her. <laughs> well, then he's in a bit of a pickle, isn't he? Well, I am, but also, like... Let's leave his pickle out of this. Sir! Sir! Well, I, I mean, I okay, I've God. been lucky. Okay, no, don't worry. There's no I've been fortunate enough that the people I've been in relationships with have been respectful. And also, we yes. talk about it. We communicate. Right. Like, if you openly communicate about what's going on, then it let, it gives you a right. space and to work it out, and that's problem. what's important. Well, thank you for being as candid as you have oh, been no today, problem. and there are a lot of people <laughs> who feel the same way you feel. <laughs> Our thanks to David J. If you want to learn more about asexuality, David will be seen in an upcoming segment on 2020. 2020. Right back. 2020. <laughs> thanks,